We usually think of people as either sick or healthy, but most diseases and disorders exist on a spectrum. The line dividing sick people from the healthy ones is arbitrary. Over the past 50 years, we've learned a lot about what causes chronic diseases, like heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. This is key. Once we know the causes, we can prevent disease. Yet we spend most of our health dollars on treatment and a never-ending, ever-elusive search for cures. What's worse, we usually blame people for their unhealthy behaviors, but fail to regulate industries that sell products that increase the risk of becoming sick. That's unfortunate. Despite all the hype about medical breakthroughs, only five out of the 30 years of life expectancy gained in the past century are due to medical care. Shouldn't the ultimate goal be to prevent disease? There are two types of strategies to curb disease, the clinical strategy and the population strategy. Our medical system, which treats individual patients and consumes over 95% of our health dollars, is a clinical strategy. That leaves only 5% for population strategies to tackle the risk factors that make us sick in the first place. The problem with investing so much of our health dollars in the clinical strategy is the majority of death, disease, and disability occurs among people who are at low or moderate risk. This concept, which is counterintuitive, is called the prevention paradox. We can use obesity and diabetes to show how it works. People who are very obese have a higher risk of developing diabetes. Only 4% of Canadians are very obese, but about one in three of them will develop diabetes over 10 years. 12% of new cases of diabetes will arise from this group. But if we only focus on people who are very obese, we would fail to prevent 88% of new cases of diabetes. What if we focus on Canadians who are very obese and obese? About 17% of Canadians fall into this category. We would still only prevent or treat about 38% of new cases of diabetes. That's the paradox. Unless we focus on people who are at low or moderate risk, we will fail to reach the majority of people who ultimately develop a disease like obesity, diabetes, or cancer. In addition, people from the low-risk group will continually replenish the high-risk group. It's a never-ending cycle. What can we do about it? First, we need to expand our investments in population strategies and design our communities to make it harder to become obese or sick. We need to make it easier to walk and cycle and make public transportation more widely available. We need to increase the availability of healthy foods and ban the marketing of unhealthy products to children. Population strategies are usually more cost-effective than those that attempt to change behaviors one person at a time, and they benefit everybody. Unfortunately, many of the things that make us sick are profitable. For too long, we have put profit before people's health. Isn't it time to give prevention a chance? <laughs>